Hey folks, today we're diving into the incredible journey of a man who turned rejection into revolution. You might know Pagani for its sleek, luxurious rides, but the story behind the brand is nothing short of inspiring. Argentina, 1955. In the humble town of Casilda, young Horatio Pagani, born to a baker and a painter, had a burning passion that set him apart. Forget the ordinary. Horatio dreamt of creating something extraordinary. His childhood escapades included building go-karts and mini-bikes with friends, laying the foundation for what would later become a powerhouse in the automotive world. Fast forward to his early 20s, and Pagani stumbled upon fiberglass, sparking the beginning of his experimental journey. With no formal engineering training, he fearlessly delved into crafting a Limitada Santa Fecina race car, a rear-engine single-seater from the heart of Argentina. But every racer needs an engine, right? Picture a determined young Pagani at the Renault Argentina headquarters, asking not just for an engine but for a chance to chase his dreams. Renault, astonished by his audacity, not only handed over the engine but also sponsored Pagani's team for an entire season. The racing world was buzzing with excitement, but as fate would have it, brake failures and financial constraints dampened their performance that season. However, Pagani's name was etched in the annals of racing history, catching the attention of known author than Formula One legend Juan Manuel Fangio, Fangio, a five-time world champion, was impressed and wrote five glowing letters of recommendation addressed to the titans of the automotive industry. Enzo Osella, Alejandro de Tommaso, Enzo Ferrari, Carlo Chidi, and Guili Alfieri. Now, here's where the twist kicks in. Lamborghini, drawn in by Fangio's recommendation, struck a verbal deal with Pagani to design their groundbreaking luxury SUV. Excitement filled the air as Pagani packed his bags and set sail for Italy, only to be met with a cruel twist of fate. Lamborghini had scrapped the project, leaving Pagani stranded without a job. But hold on tight, because this is where the true Pagani spirit emerges. Undeterred by rejection, Pagani repeatedly visited Lamborghini's office, knocking on their doors for a job that seemed elusive. Rejected each time, Pagani didn't throw in the towel. Instead, he took matters into his own hands. Against all odds, Horatio Pagani secured a loan and decided to build his dream car. Lamborghini and Ferrari might have turned their backs, but Pagani wasn't about to let his vision fade away. He transformed adversity into ambition and rejection into resilience. Now, rewind to the late 80s. Pagani, the visionary dreamer, finally lands a gig at Lamborghini, but not the role he coveted. Instead of the design team, he finds himself in the assembling department, then shuffled to the composite material department. Here, Pagani stumbles upon the automotive game changer, carbon fiber. Carbon fiber, a lighter and stronger material than Faber glass, sparked a revelation in Pagani's mind. He envisioned a future where supercars embraced this revolutionary material. But convincing the Lamborghini brass was no joy ride. Despite his persistent efforts, they shut him down. Why? Well, Ferrari wasn't doing it, so why should they? But here's where our hero's spirit shines through. Denied but undeterred, Pagani takes matters into his own hands. No more waiting for Lamborghini's green light. He marches to the bank, secures a hefty loan of 500,000 doors, and boom, buys his autoclave, the key to crafting cars from his beloved carbon fiber. Picture this, the Cantac Evolucioni, born from Pagani's relentless determination. With the autoclave and his new composite department, they created a carbon fiber aluminum masterpiece, the Evolution. Weighing in at 2,200 pounds, a jaw-dropping 1,100 pounds lighter than the standard Cantac, it's an instant hit. But guess what? Lamborghini's still not convinced. 
Despite acknowledging the evolution's brilliance, Lamborghini plays the practicality card. Too expensive, too hard to repair. The evolution remains a hidden gem, never hitting the public roads. Cue the plot twist. Ferrari drops the F40, a road beast built from composites, just as Pagani had predicted. Irony, anyone. Pagani, though, soldiers on at Lamborghini, mastering the art of persistence. But in 1991, he calls it quits, leaving with the autoclave that birthed the evolution. Soon, he's crafting carbon fiber parts for Ferrari's Formula One team, Dallara and Aprilia. It's a living, but Pagani's heart yearns for something more. 1992 marks the beginning of Pagani's project, building his dream car. Once again, he needs an engine, and once again, he turns to his friend, racing legend Juan Manuel Fangio. Through Fangio, he connects with Dieter Zetsche, an engineer at Mercedes, who hands Pagani a high-performance V12 engine. The Zonda era kicked off with a bang, and Pagani's debut, the Zonda C12, was nothing short of a revolution. It wasn't just a car, it was Pagani's prophecy fulfilled. With a 6-liter, 394-bhp AMG V12 engine boasting 450 horsepower and a 0-60 to 60 acceleration in just 4 seconds, the Zonda C12 was a beast. And let's talk about its beauty. Surrounded by Pagani's beloved carbon fiber monocoque, the interior was a symphony of craftsmanship and technical brilliance. But that was just the beginning. The Pagani team was on fire, consistently upgrading the Zonda. Within a year, they rolled out the Pagani Zonda S and the S Roadster, working overtime to keep investors and customers thrilled. The Zonda F and the F Roadster followed suit, paying homage to the legendary Juan Manuel Fangio. Then came the Pagani Zonda Cinque and Cinque Roadster, each an embodiment of speed and style. The Pagani Zonda R, a track-focused marvel, set records as the fastest track car. The Pagani Zonda Tricolore and the Pagani Zonda Revolution capped off this era of automotive excellence. But wait, there's more. The Huayra era ushered in a new age of Pagani glory. Horacio Pagani, a man with a philosophy that cars should be a blend of breathtaking art and excellent engineering, birthed the Huayra. Faster and better than its predecessors, the Huayra boasted a 6-liter AMG-sourced V12 engine with twin turbos, generating 700-ish bhp and 728 pound-feet of torque. With a 060 acceleration in less than 3.5 seconds and a top speed of 230 miles per hour, it was a true marvel. And Pagani wasn't stopping there. Post Huayra, a parade of newer models graced the scene. The Pagani Zonda Barchetta, the Pagani Huayra BC Roadster, the Pagani Huayra Tricolore, the Pagani Imola, and the Pagani Huayra R. Each one a testament to Pagani's commitment to speed, style, and of course, scarcity. Now, here's what sets Pagani apart. It's not just about cars, it's about craftsmanship and exclusivity. Customized versions of their models are crafted for those with deep pockets, Think wealthy Chinese and Arab business tycoons or politicians. The Pagani Sink and Sink Roadster? They were born from a Hong Kong business dealer's request. Speed, style, and scarcity. That's the Pagani promise. These cars aren't just fast. They're drop-dead gorgeous, and only a handful are ever produced. No wonder their price tags soar beyond $300 million. The Pagani allure isn't just about driving. It's about owning a piece of automotive history. With a net worth of $50 million, Horatio Pagani, once a little Argentine kid building toy cars with friends, has steered his way into the echelons of automotive royalty. And there you have it, folks. The Pagani journey from rejection to revolution. If you've ever dreamed of owning a Pagani, you're not alone. Speed, style, and scarcity. The Pagani trifecta that has us all dreaming of hitting the open road in one of these masterpieces. 
Thanks for riding along, and don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe for more incredible automotive stories, and share your Pagani dreams in the comments below.